Good morning, Corona Land. I hope everyone's coping in lockdown. Look at my eyebrows. Oh my God, like Snuffleupagus. Um, so I am doing a fundraising uh, drive for Bournemouth Hospital uh, by um, making these lovely contoured um, cotton face masks. And I thought, because lots of people have asked, I would do a video tutorial today on how I'm making them. Um, these have um, an internal pocket inside for putting in some extra filter if you want to use that. Um, and I'm gonna use my lovely daughter Harper to model one for you. This is Harper. Hello. <laughs> So, Harper is eight years old and she has the older child size. So, do you want to put it on? Mm -hmm. Comfy? Mm -hmm. Secure? Mm -hmm. Shake your head. Lovely. Um, so, uh, the elastic goes over the back of the head or you could put it around this way if you've got a ponytail up there. Um, if you lean forward a bit, Harper, so look down. Look down. There we go. So, it's got... Um, a inside nurse soft wire nose brace so that I can shape it to her nose and then elastic round the back turn to the side and then uh, ribbon ties so that I can make sure it's actually snug to her the shape of her face and then we just tie up the back in a nice bow um, and then it's nice and snug at the top nice and snug at the bottom nice and snug at the side so I'm going to show you how I have made these okay thanks heart Okay, so before I send you over to cut out the pan pieces, I just wanted to do a little talk through about um, what to use to make the masks with. Um, so you will need some nice, good quality cotton. Um, you can use lots of different things, duvet covers, pillowcases, sheets, lined curtains. Um, my friend Karen has donated all these beautiful uh, designer fabrics. Now this is perfect. This is just normal kind of quilting weight cotton. It's not too thick. Um, it's just a good weight. Things like um, stuff for tote bags that you would make, that's too thick. You don't want anything like that. You don't want like cushion weight, cushion fabric weight. Uh, that's, that'll be too thick. Um, so something like that is perfect. Um, for the linings, I'm just using um, a nice, good quality sheet. Um, when I say good quality, IKEA weight is absolutely fine. What's the dog doing? What are you doing? Um, yeah, Ikea weight sort of fabric is fine. You don't want to, no offence to Asda, but not your kind of Asda value bedding that's a bit thin. Um, so go ahead with that. Um, for the lining, um, don't use your nice fabric with a pattern on it because it's just going to be on the inside. So just use some kind of plain pillowcase, whatever you've got lying around. Don't use anything that's stretchy, um, nothing knit. That's going to be a nightmare to sew up and it probably won't do any good because it's it let too many particles through. Um, so the pattern I'm using is from the lovely Joanne at Craft Passion. I will put a link in the comments of everywhere that I can. So on Insta, I'll put it in my profile. YouTube, I'll put it in the description box. Um, Facebook, I'll put it in the comments. If you can't find it easily, um, it's craftpassion.com. And on the first page, you will see a uh, contoured face mark pattern. Now, if you go ahead and print out that pattern, don't watch the tutorials because I make it different to that one. But... Um, it's the Nun Pocket face mask sizes I'm using. Um, it has got a pocket, but it's this pattern pieces. Um, for the size wise, I found the sizes are slightly out. So I would say having made what feels like five million of these things for kind of two to six year olds, two and a half to six year olds, I would use the younger, ch younger kids. For six to kind of 11, I would use the older kids. And 11 plus, I would use the adult size women's. If you're a woman with a slightly larger face, um, you just, just go up to the man size and it, it should fit fine. If you're going to be making quite a few, I would suggest the easiest way to cut it out is to fold the fabric up uh, on the ironing board. If you fold it like into four, like this, so there's four pieces, iron it, mark it out uh, from the template just by going around it. I use this posh knobber embroidery pen that just irons out, but most people probably haven't got that lying around. Um, so pencil is absolutely fine. Just mark it out, cut around it, and then you've got enough to make two out of one cut, so you having to cut with scissors a million times. So if you wanna go ahead and cut out um, pieces, I'm gonna work off the women's size, just a plain women's size, because I've got loads of orders for that. Um, when it says about making the bias tape, you may very well want to cheat and not be bothered to cut on the bias. Cutting on the bias means that you take the fabric, so it would be the lining fabric, which would be, just be a bit of, um, I haven't got it here, but it would just be a bit of a um, plain pillowcase or whatever. But you fold it diagonally like this and then cut this part. 
so it's on the diagonal. Um, don't cheat on that because you do need it to stretch and when you cut on the bias it means it stretches around and you need, it, you need the bracing to stretch around this part of the face. So unfortunately don't cheat on that. Um, it can waste quite a lot of fabric so what I would suggest you do is fold it small at the end, cut there and then fold again and if you need bigger pieces cut there it just means you get more out of the fabric rather than cutting it in half and just cutting a chunk out the middle and then you just wrap the whole thing. Um, so go ahead and do that and then come back and I will show you the other bits and bobs I'm going to use to make it super comfy and um, then I'll go through how we set it up. Okay? Okie dokie, so um, other bits and bobs we're going to need. So I've cut out the lining pieces from just some nice plain pillowcase. Um, we've got our main uh, front pieces which are this, the kind of the nice fabricy bits um, and I've cut out a load of bias tape which is here. So we're going to need all those pieces. The other things we're going to need are, for the nose bracing, I am using good old Wilco garden ties. Now, I'll just tell you why I'm using these. Um, there are lots of other options that people will tell you, like pipe cleaners or um, paper clips and all this kind of thing. Now, you might think pipe cleaners would be better because they're all kind of, you know, covered and lovely and comfy. But the thing is with pipe cleaners, these need to be washed. And the minute you put a pipe clean cleaner in the wash, it's just going to disintegrate. You're going to get fluff everywhere and then rust is, rust is going to come through. So I've tried everything and these are I think are the best because they are already waterproof covered so they'll go through the wash fine um, they're lovely and super and bendy and they stay in their shape and they're nice and easy to sew in so that would be my recommendation for the wire top would just be good old garden ties um, for the elastic which is becoming quite hard to source but if you can get your hands on it good oh um, this is um, six millimeter uh, just normal plain flat elastic so you're going to need those when you're cutting the elastic um, the way that I'm kind of sizing the length is I'm putting it over my head, I'm pulling it so that it's taut but not uncomfortable, um, and then I'll cut one, because I've got quite an average side heads, and then I'll cut that and then cut a load to that size, and then I put it over the girls' heads, do the same thing, and then I'll put it over Dom's head for the men's one. So, and so I'm cutting out a load of those so that I'm ready. And the other thing we're going to need is uh, some ribbon. Now, um, I get, I happen to just be a designer, so I have all this lovely stuff just lying around and I get that people don't. So, but, so I'm using nice kind of cross grain um, ribbon, which is the kind of textured kind of ribbon like that. Um, if you don't have any of that lying around, um, you can just cut up some fabric pieces. Um, this is also really good. This is um, butcher's tape or fabric tape if you're looking for it online. It's the stuff that goes on the back of aprons. Um, stuff not to use I wouldn't use anything satin um, you know like that kind of Christmas present wrapping stuff that is just going to fray something dreadful and um, it won't stay taut on the back of the head it will just be all slippy and dreadful and nothing with the wires in it because that's just not going to work um, if you have pinking shears which are those kind of crossy scissors um, they're really good for cutting up um, the ends of the ribbon because it won't fray if you've done it with a pinking shear um, but if you don't have pinking shears you can just fold it down and put a couple of stitches um, along there which will stop the fray from happening um, now when you're cutting out the ribbon you're going to need more than you think right because you might think like this might be enough but it's actually quite a lot you need especially because the reason I've done ribbon ties at the bottom is so that you can actually fit it to each person's head so make sure you do a good long length of the ribbon that's maybe what's that about 50 centimeters maybe that I'm cutting so that's all the stuff we're going to need I'm going to move this all over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew it up um, just a bog standard sewing machine is absolutely fine. Your old Ikea special, brilliant. We're just going to do a straight stitch. Um, if you're going to do a load, I would maybe make up a few bobbins with a light coloured um, thread. I did at the beginning think, oh, I'll do a nice like contrasting thread. That would be a bit lovely. I uh, did a contrasting thread and it just looked like there was viral all over the front of the mask. So just do something light and plain, unless obviously you're doing a really dark colour and then use a dark colour cotton if you've got it. If not, anything will do, isn't it? Anything will do. So uh, let's go over. Right. We are off. I've got uh, some nice light coloured cotton in, my bobbin is full, normal presser foot, normal straight stitch. I've got it set on a three, I don't know what your machine is, but just like a normal straight stitch is fine. And we are going to start with the lining. Now, if you're new to sewing, um, you will hear lots of people saying right side and wrong side. Um, so the right side is the bit that faces outwards. That you see that is the right side so this would be the right side of the fabric and the back bit is the wrong side okay 
So uh, if for some reason you're using a lining that has a right side and a wrong side, um, you would want the right sides facing each other, wrong sides facing out. Okay, so I've got two pieces sandwiched together, cut out like that. We're gonna do no faffing with pins. So lining size, we're gonna sew um, a seam down this curve part onto the machine. Now to size it, I just use the outside of the presser foot is gonna be uh, running along the outside of the curve and that'll just give me the right kind of seam allowance ish I don't bother with back stitching everything because it's all going to be sewn in together I'll tell you when to back stitch back stitching if you don't know what I'm talking about is most machines will have like a little button on it or something that you press and then it, the stitching goes backwards it's just a secured stitches down but you don't need to do it on a lot of this so right we're going to run uh, just a straight running stitch all the way down the side of the curve and right off the end Right, what I hate about sewing, and why I don't do much of it, is the faff. Oh, I cannot bear continuously having to snip the uh, thread bits off, but you have to, because otherwise it all gets caught up. So just snip the, um, the threads off the end. And we now have uh, a seam running down the curve of the lining, and we are going to snip some little um, kind of lines, snip lines, um, around the edge of the seam. Now be really careful, don't snip into the stitches or else it's all gonna come apart. So we're just gonna do some little slits kind of along here. The reason we do it um, is, I'm trying to, sorry, I'm trying to look at the camera at the same time. Um, the reason we do it is, is that when we turn it around, we want it to lie flat and it needs to kind of go in on itself. So trust me, I wouldn't be bothering with this if it didn't need it, but it does. So, so we're gonna fold it outwards Okay, so this is the right side with the nice neat bit. The wrong side is now the bit with the seam in. So on the right side, just pull it taut. Run your finger down the middle just to make sure it's all sitting nicely. Now we're going to run up what's called a top stitch down this bit here. And what you need is the seam inside to all be lying. The seam inside to all be lying on the same side. So the way I do that is I pop it under the presser foot and rather than faffing around with pins, I can't bother with that, I just stick my thumb underneath, pull the seam to one side, stitch down, they're going quite close to the seam edge there, I'll show you in a sec, and then as I'm going along keep pulling the seam underneath to one side, and then just seam, just keep going right off the end. So now we have a lovely top seam running down the top, sits nice and straight. The back's all sitting right, so I'm just gonna snip those threads off. Still on the lining, we're still on the lining. Okay, so wrong side facing you, take um, one of the ends, the side ends, let me just see if I can zoom out so you can get a good view of the shape. Hold on, how do you like this camera? Who knows, nobody. Oh, it's a bit of a better angle, isn't it? We'll do it from here. So, uh, Got a nice top seam, everything's sitting nice and lovely. So wrong side on the short end, you're gonna fold it down about, hmm, what's that, about a centimetre, eight mils, we don't need to be exact here. And then we're gonna run a straight stitch line just to seam that down. Okay, so now we have that end bit is seamed down. On the other side again, wrong side facing you, fold down the other end, about the same. Is that about eight mil, centimetre, something like that? Straight seam down. Don't be tempted to wait to the end to cut all the threads off. Uh, I'm lazy and I've tried that and it ends up that the threads just get sewn into everything. It's a good nightmare. So this should now be the inside of your lining. 
those two end bits are sewn down, seams in the middle and on the front you've got a lovely top seam and the ends are sewn in. Okay, lining to one side, bias tape. Okay, bit of bias tape on the short end, fold it up maybe, again, just under a centimetre. Okay, and then fold it in half. If you have, for some reason, a pattern piece, you want the wrong side on the inside, right side facing out. I'm going to stitch down that short end there. And then just as you get to the bottom, don't take it out. If you haven't sewn very much, what you need to do to do a turn is you need to make sure the needle is down into the fabric, okay? And then lift up the presser foot, and then you can turn it and the fabric will stay in place, you're not going to lose your place, and then just put the presser foot back down, okay? Can you see what I've done there? Um, and then with your hands, fold in the other end, fold it up so it's fairly neat. You do want those top edges to be quite in line with each other, because we're going to stitch around that in a minute. That should do it. And then we're going to go down here and then we're going to do up the end so the top's open down the side down the bottom on the fold and then up the other fold again stop with the needle down press the foot up turn press the foot down off the end and then you are left with a little pocket sewn up the sides and the top is open Get your garden tie. Now, the bracing needs to fit in, inside this pocket, so you just measure it inside the stitches. Not too tight, you don't want it like exactly to the end or else it's gonna be really hard to stitch. So leave maybe mm, two mil gap in between the seams, so it's like that, that sort of length, snip it off. pop it inside this pocket. Push it down to the bottom so it sits nice and snug down the bottom like thus. Now, bring your lining back. Eyeball this, don't measure this, don't pin this, this I'm what a faff. Eyeball it to the middle so the middle is about there for me. Grab your lining Hold the seam where the seam is in front, right side, right side up. Where the thumb is in the middle, put that against the seam, hold them together. So this is where we need the bias tape, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna sew it down around that top. You can have a little pokey bit there, that's normal, don't worry about that. We're gonna trim that up in a minute, it'll be fine. So hold the pocket in the middle, hold the other bit down, to the shape of the top of the mask. And we're going to sew the nose bracing onto the right side of the top. Make sure that wire's nice and snug in there. We're not sewing the wire in, the wire sits still down in the pocket. So um, I'm doing about maybe a two mil gap from the edge for the seam here. I'm going to go around and then just keep shaping it with your fingers rather than flapping the pins. You do want to back stitch on this one because it's going to be, uh, there's nothing else stitching it on, so back stitch the beginning and the end. Okay, so that's the nose brace, is attached to the lining, inside the little pocket, we've got a bit of odds and end bits there which we're going to tidy up by just snipping it nice and tidy, okay. like dust. Okay, that, you're done with the lining, put that to one side. Nice, uh, beautiful outside fabric. Okay, so I've got your two pieces, we're going to put the right sides together, and just like on the lining, we are going to sew around this edge here, Again, use the outside of the presser foot as a guide for how big the seam's gonna be. 
So pop, the, pop it down, run it down off the end. My children are um, suspiciously quiet. I suspect they're recreating the Titanic in the bathroom. Uh, oh, it's hard, isn't it? Lockdown, hard. Right. So again, we're going to snip some little pieces along the seam so that it folds nicely. Again, being careful not to go into the actual stitches. Fold it open. Push it out. We're going to do a nice top stitch just down this edge here to keep it straight, nice and neat. Down with the presser foot, keeping the seam to one side with your thumb, all the way down. Lovely top seam in there, looking very nice. That's got the seam inside. Lovely. Snip off the ends. Oopa. Super duper. Okay, right side up, bring your lining back in. Now, you want the right sides together, curvy top to curvy top. On the back of, the, of your lining, put your thumb on the seam and match it up with the seam on the front. So that's about there. So the same as we did before when we put the nose bracing on, we're just gonna, oh, threads, I can't, oh, I can't burst, I mean, look at it, it's just fucking need how are they even there, I cut them. <sighs> right, hold it down and we're gonna sew it along the top so that it fits onto the top of the mask. Remember, right sides together. Now, seam-wise, I'm gonna do about mm, three, four mil. I'm using the hole on the presser foot. There's like the outside of the presser foot, I use for the outside seams, and there's like a little gap, and I use the kind of right-hand edge of that gap for the top seam in. So I'm gonna put it there. That's what I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna sew it around. Here we go. I'm going to back stitch this one, I don't know why. I feel like it. Now, if you've got a fairly cheapy kind of sewing machine, which is absolutely fine, not everyone can afford a beanie knee, can they? Um, you might find that your sewing machine struggles a little bit with this bit because there's quite a lot of um, fabric to go through there. If it's struggling to, um, to go through, just pull it at the back a bit, um, spare at it, and um, it should do it. Okay, so that's what we've got now. Fronts are together. Now, do an idiot check here because the amount of times that I've balls this up, I can't even begin to tell you. Um, flip it open just quickly and make sure there's no holes in there because otherwise you're doomed. And what are these threads? I mean, I just. God, I much prefer knitting. We don't have this for knitting. Um, right sides are still together. Red sides together. And now we are going to um, do the same along the bottom of the lining and the bottom of the main. So just hold them together with your fingers. So it's kind of matching at the bottom. Under the presser foot. Going to use that little outside bit as a on the presser foot as a guide, and we are going to stitch down here. Okay, that is the lining sewed into the front, and it should look like this. 
for that with flowers and bed tank. Oh. God, God have mercy upon my soul. There we go. That's what it should be like now. Um, just have a quick check, everything's nice. Um, if you've got, for some reason, you've done it further in than me, that's fine. Um, just do some little snips like you did on the front so that it folds in nicely, but mine are quite tight. You know, there's not a lot of gap there. I'm just gonna tidy up the top and get rid of those little snippy bits. All looks fine. So now we're gonna turn it the right way and just do that by turning it inside out. Now, this is the only bit that is worth a bit of faffing on um, because we're now going to do the top stitching, which is the bit that keeps it looking nice and neat and fitting well and all that jazz. So when you turn it inside out, I just run my fingers along the seams to push them out, make sure they're all, no holes, it's all nice, pull the ends out, give it a bit of shook about, pull it into shape, nose brace goes down onto the lining, pull that wire down a little bit. Okay, that's the front, back. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do um, the top stitch. So with the uh, lining facing upwards, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run um, a line of stitching quite close to the edge, only like a millimeter or two millimeters from the edge. And we're gonna sew this seam all the way along it one side to the other. So just fold that little foldy flappy endy bit down a bit. And we're gonna go all the way along here, all the way to the end. Again, if the sewing machine struggles, just expletives really, I'm pulling it. There. Okay, can you see that? It's got a lovely line of top stitching all the way along there to the other side and to the other side. And now we're going to do the same at the bottom. So lining facing up, fold that little scraggler in. Make sure it's quite neat. All the way along. Now the bottom bit has a nice seam along it, all along there. So that is the bottom and top. So nearly there now. Back's got the pocket in, lining, nose brace. Snip the threads. Right, final steps, which is gonna be getting the elastic and ribbon on. We're gonna take the scraggy little ends, fold it down once, and then fold it down twice, like so. Get your pre-cut elastic and the elastic goes just in here inside this little pockety bit there hold it down with your finger now we do need to be secure and neat here so we're gonna go down this side here close to the edge in and then up the other side because we need to make sure the elastic is super secure we're going to stop halfway down and we're going to add in our ribbon. Um, if you're using a fancy ribbon like this, it's got a pattern on it, you want the uh, right side facing down um, so that when obviously it's around your face, you've got the nice bit facing out like that. So we're going to go down, back stitch. We're going to stop about there and we're going to hold the ribbon down, maybe what's that, two centimetres up from the bottom, about there. Okay, and we're gonna, got my hand in the way, 
that there, about two centimetres down, just hold it down and then we're just going to sew that down. And then we're going to stop when we get quite close to the bottom. Turn, I'm lying, it's a bit bigger than I thought. And there we go, sorry, sorry, there we go. Up. We're going to go, now we're going to go up this side to secure it double down. And a back stitch. Up and off. So we have got a lovely secure bit of elastic, secure bit of ribbon. Okay. Now we're going to take the other end of the mask going to fold this bit down and then this bit down again we're going to run the piece of elastic from the other side through our fingers because so that it doesn't isn't twisted so we know that it's straight so just run it through your hand hold that down into the fold as well like this like so and do the same as we did on the other side this is another piece of ribbon by the way don't use the end of this one I'll explain tie off at the back okay stop at the end turn crank it forward a couple that's all lovely and we have one beautiful finished contoured wired super comfy face mask Ta -da! lovely so the face nice and snug at the back we can push it down to shape to my face take the ends tie it in in a little ball and there we go super snug super comfy lovely job done I hope this has helped um, even just a little bit um, if you're gonna be making your own if you've got any questions um, Feel free to comment and if I get two minutes um, after sewing other 300 of these, I will gladly answer them. See you later. Hey, it's Lou. If you've just watched one of my videos and you found it even remotely entertaining or informative, can I ask a huge favour? Could you possibly click the subscribe button wherever it may be around your screen? It's just that subscribers are kind of our indicators to know whether to carry on making video or whether to just not bother. Um, if you're watching this embedded, you can find us on YouTube at Lou Spout Stuff. Okay, thanks a lot. See you soon. Bye.